Oh, hello and greetings. Muhammad Suleiman Ahmad Zai is here with a new session for you, dear friends. The important topic of today's detailed lesson with you is how to effectively create and carefully edit folders within the Windows 11 operating system. Let's now see precisely how we can quickly and efficiently create a new folder in Windows 11 using a convenient keyboard shortcut. How many ways are there to create a folder? How can we have nameless folders? How can we have multiple folders with the same name? What types of folders are there and what is the shortcut for creating a folder? We will cover all these topics with you in one video. The first thing we'll discuss is how to create a folder using a shortcut. The shortcut is Ctrl plus Shift plus N. As soon as you press this combination, a folder is created and then you can name it. For example, I'll press Ctrl plus Shift plus N again. Let's say the name of this folder is, for example, we press Enter for Zia, and that's how we created two folders together. One named Alex and one named Zia, both using the Ctrl plus Shift plus N shortcut. Now, let's look at the second method for creating a folder. On this page, we right-click. This way, the context menu opens. We go to the New section. Here, we select New Folder, and as soon as we click, the folder is created, and then we name it together. For example, we named this one John. We press Enter. It takes the name we've given it. The next topic is, for example, how can we create a folder with no name at all? You see, whenever we create a folder, it always gets a name. This folder, for example, is named New Folder. Now I press Backspace or Delete. We press Enter again. We see that it still gets a name so we can't make it nameless. So how can we do this? That is, just right-click, create a folder. What do you do after that? You get a penis 0160, alt plus 0160, alt 0160. What are you doing? You press enter. Now you see that our folder doesn't have any name. So if you want to create a folder that has no name at all, you can use alt 0160. If at any time we want to have two or three folders with the same name, we can't do this normally on the computer. For example, here we have a folder named, let's say, A. Now let's try to tell it that we want to create another folder named A. Let me create another folder for this. We come back to the desktop. Again, we tell it, I have another folder named A. When I press enter, it gives me a warning. It says, confirm folder replace. It tells you, the destination already contains a folder named A. It says that in this location where you want to create a folder named A, there is already a folder with that name. So you can't have two folders with the same name, or both named A. So what do we do? After this, we do the same thing again. Alt 0160. After that, we type A. We press Enter. Now, as you can see, we have two folders named A on this page. If we want to do the same with C, we can do it the same way. We come back again. We say, I want to create another folder. Alt 0 160, and this time we add a space. After that, we type A again. Each time, if for example we create three folders with the same name, A. But there's another point. If you want to create more folders, you need to increase the number of spaces each time. In the example, I say I want another folder, 0 1 6 0. I also added a space and two spaces here. After that, we write A. Now, if we have four folders with the same name on this page, which Windows does not allow, we can enter them together with the alt code 0160. And likewise, Windows would not accept a folder like this, where we don't have any name for the folder at all. So, we were able to create this together. Another topic is that we have several types of folders. In Windows, we have two types of folders. One is a file folder, which is a simple folder. The other is a compact zip folder. Our file folder, or file folder, is the same folder we just worked with. We have another folder called a compact and zip folder. This folder performs two functions. One is that it compresses our data, for example. When you paste a file into it, it takes up a little less space. The second point is that, as you can see, it has a chain icon, meaning it's a zip. In English, zip means chain. For example, if you want to send 10 files to someone via email or address, those files are sent individually and it becomes quite a hassle to send them. Sometimes we can't even send the files. So what do we do then? We put all our files into this folder. We zip the files. Then, when that person receives the files, they open this folder. Here, there is usually a button called Extract All. Then they extract all their files from here. They unzip them. So it has two differences compared to a regular folder. One is that it compresses the data for us, making it more compact. It takes up less space. Second, when you want to send a file to someone via email or address, a zipped file means it is sent as a single unified file. 
Then when you unzip it, what happens to the different files? They are separated. And the last topic is how can we change the icon of a folder? It's very simple. For example, we select the folder together. We press Alt and Enter, Alt Enter. This button opens a dialog box for us. A properties box will open. It shows which folder it belongs to. If you didn't press Alt and Enter, you can simply right click, then go to properties. If we want to change its icon, go to the Customize tab and click on the section called Change Icon. Or after selecting the icon, we click OK. Then click OK again. Now see what happened to the icon of this folder? It has been changed. And if we want to bring back its default icon again, to restore its default icon, we select it again. We press Alt plus Enter. We go to the Customize tab. We click on Change Icon. Here we select Restore Default and then click OK. Well, instead of changing the icon, if we want, we can even set a photo, like our own picture, as the folder icon, right? We can apply it. But first, we need to save a picture as an ICO or icon file. So, I'll start from the beginning. I open the Paint program. Inside the Paint program, when you move your mouse, go to the File tab. We go to the File section. Then we go to the Import section. Once there, what do you do with your own photos? Here we import it. The photo that you want to use specifically as the icon. After that, bring in the photo and press Ctrl plus W. This will make the photo smaller, so that the photo is now the right size. Then, after that, it tells you to crop. Okay, we've selected the icon we want to apply here. Again, go back to the File menu. Go to the Save section. Here we make our selection. Now choose the format, just like on the desktop. That is, Taiko. When we save this, it will ask us for the time. Now the unique file, an image icon, has been saved in the step. We can see that the desktop has been saved. If we want to assign a unique image to any folder, what should we do? To apply it, for example, what do we do? We right-click on the folder we want. We go to Properties, or to put it more simply, select it. We have been using these tricks all along. In the Customize section, where we did most of the work, we go to the part called Change Icon. This section is written at the top. In Folder Pictures, we click on Choose a File. Let's say we have a picture on our desktop that we saved ourselves. We carefully select our own personal photo and then confirm it by simply clicking the OK button. Wait a moment, your photo will be applied here. If we make its size bigger, you'll see that your photo appears here like this. We select the specific folder, and if we want to change it back again, we can do so. So, whenever we right-click or press Alt on this side, I go into Properties, then to Customize, and select Restore Default. After that, click OK, and the folder will return to its normal default appearance. This was our lesson on creating folders in different ways, and at the end, dear friends, I kindly ask that if you found these videos helpful, please like the videos to support us and help the channel grow. Subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in future sessions. Goodbye. And so, as our time together comes to an end, I want to express my sincere gratitude for your presence and attention. It has been a truly valuable experience, and I wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. Until we meet again, farewell.